Gnomes, besides those fellows, the scald crows of Clane are the noblest of gents. Do you think I look good in these elegant regimentals? Citoyenne Rotonde de Paris. How I miss Matilda standing here. My dearest beloved Matilda, kiss my babies for me, always. To see him up there, that avian rascal upon my left shoulder, it was he who relieved himself with vigor only this morning. Sometimes I ask myself, was it for this that I courted poverty? Left my dearest wife unprotected and the children whom I adored, fatherless. But oh, to abide in a land where England has sown her laws like dragon's teeth, never scrupling to make full use of the sly, the informer, and the agent, inciting within me such a riot of revulsion that I would not rest before I and my fellow Jacobins saw an end to insult and justice routinely denied, ranged boldly beneath the green standard of freedom in an Ireland unsundered by connived at sectarianism, the property of Pat and Presbyterian alike, Irishmen united, finally unfettered, free at last. How I wish I was alive to quaff with Tom Paine or Thomas Russell one more time and play the flute. But I must tell you about my old friend Napoleon. So quiet and unassuming, for the hour I was with him, he scarce spoke a word. The largest fleet you can muster, I said. replied the first emperor. Who fears to screech? Brave, adventurous, fertile in resource, buoyant under misfortune, and as near a fatal enemy to England as Hannibal was to Rome. That's also been said. But there comes a time when one tires of pulling down monarchies. So I'm away off now to dream of that glorious summer that she and I spent in Irish town with our sweet, lovely babes. And of liberté, égalité, et fraternité, now three hundred years old, the darlings. So pass on, stranger. On my behalf, say hello to the waving flag of Pat Liberated. How fares the Republic these times? And if you see the jailer who may have murdered me, make sure and tell him that I bear him no ill will. God bless everybody.